Grizz Nation, welcome in. Another edition of Grizz Classics coming at you. This is a game that's talked about again, still in Grizz history for uh, multiple reasons. I know we'll get into the jerseys mostly, but this uh, what happened on the field was pretty impressive. The 2008 rivalry game against the neighbors from Bozeman. We've got plenty of Grizz legends in the house, head coach Bobby Howe, as well as Chase Reynolds, Colt Anderson, Mark Mariani's back for his second edition of Grizz Classics. Guys, this is going to be a blast. Can't wait to hear your insights on, uh, um, let's just say, the, the butt kicking from what happened in 2008, Coach. <laughs> this will be fun. We'll, we'll get a chance to talk to these guys and look at it, them back a few years when they were college kids instead of hardworking family guys like they are now. So let's take a look at this. At my, one of my favorite parts of the day is when we took the field. I got goosebumps. <laughs> so I remember looking around and seeing some guys that were my era a little ahead. These guys are openly have tears streaming down their face. And uh, I mean, it's just absolutely awesome to watch. Uh, the crowd, you know, they're on their feet cheering, and then they go absolutely crazy. Yeah. <laughs> the guy down here by the band. <laughs> I'll tell no you that. Doubt, this was one of the greatest days ever for me in a Grizzly uniform. We grew up watching these colors and, you know, all the memories uh, on, on the tube growing up and just, just to be able to wear those colors and, and be part of this history – and, and then take the field as a surprise was insane. So, Colt, what do you remember from that morning? Oh, shoot, man. It was, uh, you know, there were some whispers going around the locker room, like, we're really going to do this. Um, the week before, we, we became suspicious when, when uh, I think we were playing Idaho State, and you said, hey, we're going to do the seniors, um, you know, the week before Cat Grizz game, Grizz Cat, whatever you call it. But uh, we're doing the seniors this week, and we're like, well, that's weird. There must be something going on next week. And then uh, uh, morning of the game, you know, we don't hear anything. Morning of the game, we're in our team meeting over in the uh, hall over there, and you walk in with a black duffel bag, and uh, everyone kind of sits up like something's going on. And all of a sudden, you, you unzip the black duffel bag and pull out the old school jerseys, and, and we just erupted. I mean, that was – I still get goosebumps, but – the whole place grew up and we're like, we're really, we're really doing this. And then, you know, it called down and you said, all right, here's, here's what we're doing. We're going out in the all maroon, maroon on maroon. Uh, we're warming up. Don't put your leg pads in. Um, we're going to warm up and our other stuff. We're going to have Carl Pitcher and Dan uh, Carr come out and they're going to be our captains. He said, we're going to go into the locker room and we're going to change real fast into old school colors. And so we're like, holy cow, we're doing this. And so we, we surprise them. I mean, we're just going nuts. We're like, we can't, we can't believe we're doing this. And um, I think it's the first time since 1995 we rocked those colors. So uh, what, a, what a special moment. Um, you know, it's a game I'll never forget. Uh, still talked about, obviously, to this day. It yeah. Was, it Cold. was cool for me to watch you guys go. Uh, sorry, Chase, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to talk about what Colt was saying. Same thing for me, like that memory of – of you walking in with that black duffel bag and kind of, you know, a little bit, maybe some whispers of what was going on, but you know, that moment uh, when that Jersey came out and just that feeling of everybody with that emotion uh, you know, that's one memory that I, I talk about a lot. And uh, that feeling I'll never forget is, is, you know, not so much running out of that tunnel, but the, the instant you pull it out in that meeting room, I felt like just the, the, power of every the excitement in there was was so special and that's a, that's a memory I hold very deep coach at what point did you think okay w when did you know because obviously you held the key to all of this and surprised the team morning of but when did you have a feeling when was this in the works kind of take us behind the scenes because again this is talked about so much the throwback game when did you actually know it was going to happen so it was fun for me to be in that meeting with you guys that morning and and uh you know, Jim Foley, our executive vice president, and Jim O'Day, our athletic director, hatched this plan. They came to me in June, and I thought it'd be, I thought it was a great idea. I thought it'd be a lot of fun, uh, especially if we won the game. But uh, uh, so we practiced you guys in your old helmets the first half of fall camp and then sent those in to be painted because we wanted it to be a, as exact a replica as we could get. And uh, uh, 
we, we gave you new helmets the week before the first game, and it was really it was really cool. You know, the and I, the going out and warming up in the old jerseys uh, wasn't really my idea. I remember somewhere in my background, probably when I was a high school kid, Notre Dame went out and, and warmed up in their in their blue home jerseys and went and put in their green jerseys and kicked the hell out of somebody. So that was stolen, like most things in coaching. So <laughs> anyway, I want to watch this one more time and just watch the people in the stadium go crazy. It is so fun to watch. How do you like that, Chris Nation? <laughs> Talk about throwing a dirt ball. The Grizzlies warmed up in their all maroons, and they hit the field in the throwback copper and gold. Well, you know I'm loving yeah. it. Jeff. You know, Colt was right. First time we wore those since 95. Yeah. I think there was a lot of chatter about it. You know, obviously it's tried. It's hard to keep a secret. But when we came out and warmed up in the regular – maroon and silver i think everyone was like oh it's not happening yeah. so then when we ran out of the tunnel yeah it was, it was good a- you know there was maybe some a little bit of chatter like you said mostly among you guys i, I have a lot of people tell me oh i knew i never heard one question about it that week not one <laughs> you know you know I, I i found out right after the game so my brother my brother luke was working at universal and i think you guys did some stuff through them in the summer mm-hmm. and uh after the game, he's like, I knew back in June or July, like you said, because you guys had done some stuff through Universal. And I, I couldn't believe that he kept the secret that long. He didn't tell anybody, but sure, yeah. sure enough, he was dressed in the old school colors that day. There was like uh, – He brought like, some shirts for some of our family uh, and, and friends, and, and then they, they were all wearing it. And as soon as we ran out, he said all of them looked at him, He's and he had a big smile, and he says, yeah, I knew they were going to do That's that, funny. so – um, well, it's pretty like crazy that he kept there's like 10 people who knew, <laughs> there's like 10 people who knew fully threatened them all with their lives yeah <laughs> he must have that was awesome look how young you look there coach. What a great oh moment. god yeah i mean no gray hair you yeah guys, all, the, all the gray hairs from you guys yeah <laughs> Hey, Calgus got that those arms looking nice. Wow. <laughs> yeah, look at him. Hey, there's there's another one where he's going to get he, they're going to show him at the end of this thing where he's got him ripped up. Hey, I, I think we got punched in the mouth early here, coach. Yeah, yeah this was a uh, this was 80 some yards, 84 yard run to uh to start it. That was about uh, two thirds of their total on the day. Blockers across the 20. Huge play by Shane. Yeah, it is. So the effort level here is awesome. I mean, he's got a blocker on him. There's no way this doesn't score at right. this point. And Shan does a great job. And then, the you know, that's a fumble in our ball. And and yeah. I'm going to show you here. I'll freeze it on the end zone view of it. But in the day yeah. of uh, replay, this would have been a fumble in our ball. But in, in hindsight, I'm glad it didn't happen because uh, the next four plays are going to be fun to watch. Yeah, they are. Just what was the north end zone like? What do you remember from this? That how crazy were they to start the game? Goal line stand right here. Three yard line. Yeah, it definitely ruled out of bounds. I mean, it is a good thing. Well, there, there's nothing more special than the north end zone. I mean, I'll come out as he does. I, I guess it was only right that we were down there in the in the uh, first he, drive of the of the game. I mean, obviously we didn't want to give it to him on the the one yard line, but. Um, it's only fitting that we got to get them involved in the game nice and early. This ended up being a heck of a play. You can see he's in bounds there. He reached, I don't know why he's reaching it from the four yard line to start with, but he does. And caused a fumble and got on it. Should have been our ball, but that's okay. There he is. So I, I guess I didn't realize it at the time that that ball came out like that. I was, I missed a tackle early on and was pouting. So. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't uh, go back to that on purpose. I'm glad you brought it up. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> there was a. There was a. There, you didn't swing and miss much in that game. You know, Shan had a heck of a game in this game, yeah, by the way. So they go. Uh, it's four plays from here. We're gonna watch them in uh, quick succession. They go power to the right. Uh, they go lead zone, power again, and then play action. So there's the power. Short yardage, handoff right up the middle to C.J. Palmer. Nothing. A I think, so power I think this, to the right. I think this set the tone for the rest of the day. I mean, for them to go 80 yards on the first play or whatever it was, and then for the boys to flex on them 
and have this this stop. I mean, they're at the one yard line and it's second down. This 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 kind of shut the door quick on any hopes they had for the rest of the day. You remember this series, Colt? Absolutely. You know, it's pretty awesome. You you look at the guys on that defense, and you know, we were just blue collar guys. You know, not nothing fancy. We just lined up. You know, we didn't disguise much, and we said, "Line up, give us your best shot." And um, it was a fun group to be a part of. So we got third and goal for the one. Shan's helmet's almost off. Who was that? Beef with the huge yeah. hit in the hole. Yeah, Beef had a good game in this game, too. So then they go back to power to the left. Nothing. Good job by old 19 there, seeing it and going and getting it. Homer again. Hitting the backfield. Colt Anderson, the senior safety from Butte, comes up to make the stop short of the goal. Colt made two out of the four plays. To see Colt Anderson I don't know about that. I got lucky. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you, you wrap get up. lucky a lot in your career. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, this is such a cool – like Mark said, I mean, way, way to get the crowd involved early and set the tone. Well, they were involved pretty early about the time you came out of that uh, tunnel. Coach, how many guys from Montana do we have on that defense there? You know, I think uh, most of the time we played eight guys. I think there were eight starters from Montana. And then Mettler's from Walla Walla. That's about the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Stat Stadnick's from Saskatoon. That's about the same thing. <laughs> so they ran a little play action. Shan's got him covered. Good pressure by Stadnick, and then uh, here comes Colt and the crew. Nice. Oh, look at that. Look at all those helmets, man. You got nowhere, Dessen. <laughs> That's a fellow Billings guy, Riley, like you. He is. It uh, wasn't a rough day. It was a pretty rough day for him, though, I think. Right? I don't think it you was a pretty day. rough day. <laughs> so that was, a, that was a great start. And uh, obviously, we're all pretty fired up. This was a uh, this was a big play because they, uh, you know, they were on the move. They'd moved the ball a little bit. Um, we weren't doing much. And good job there, coming on the uh, pressure. That's uh, Shan, I believe. That was a zone pressure we put in about midway during the season. That we got, a, we had a lot of. Uh, success with Shan played more of the nickel that um, bring in Eric holds the other safety and, and Shan sure. did a phenomenal job as that nickel for us and started and I really a lot of sometimes a Jace Palmer got good heat it was uh you're gonna see the zone pressure come up on the last play of the game too it was pretty good for us <laughs> but, uh, field and boundary zone pressure were kind of our deal that year yeah so big play there but you can see, I mean, there's, there's nobody's doing much. We certainly haven't. I don't think we have a first down in the game at uh, this point. But the, the hallmark of these teams when you guys were playing was finding ways yeah, to win. And you know Coach Paulson. Mark, you can talk us through this. Going to punt it out of bounds. It's a gamble, man. So <laughs> you might have been trying. <laughs> the, punter, the punter sort of shanks this a little bit, and, 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 and it has a short kick. And whenever you're running up on a ball like this, you never know if you're going to get smacked in the mouth wow. or not. But uh, great job. I mean, look at I just catch the ball and I run straight, man. Look at these guys. Everybody's pancaking dudes. Once you I outran, mean, yeah, look, once you outran 34 there, the, the best block is Severin Campbell right there on 54 because he's got a chance to get it called back. I think I see Nick Haynes out there blocking yeah. the gunner to the inside. I mean, yep. I knew something came up earlier in the season where – I came up hard on one and, and fair caught it. And I thought, man, if I were – so I knew this was a gamble coming up and taking this ball on the run. But, man, it parted with the boys w working their ass off up there and made my job real easy on that one. Hey, first, first of all, first of all, Mark, that's a, a ballsy catch. And second of all, uh, Coach Houck, back to your Severin Campbell. That's obviously being a, a, a team – a special teamer in the pros and making my living there. That's, a, that's an unsung play right there with Severin doing the old rip by. That's something, uh, something people don't do. That's an easy block in the back, and that ball's coming back. So, Nick big special Haynes, teams coach Donkey, there. Severin. That's good stuff. Mark, the week before you had an 80-plus, 80 84-yard or something, didn't you? Yeah, I think Idaho State um, – 
the week before. So it was a good run. The special teams coach had the boys flying around, I think. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, we struggled a little bit in that game. I'm telling you, this, this one, that. I'll never forget this one, but it was it was all about the 10 guys in front of me on that. Yeah, that was really. that was pretty pure there, and that was a good way to start this day. What were you saying, Colt? No, I was just going to say, you call that the anti-clip block still? The anti-clip still. We drill it. <laughs> what a great it's technique. Our clip blocking circuit. Believe it or not, I coach my seventh and eighth graders the exact same block. I don't even want them <laughs> trying to block somebody. Just put your hands up through their armpits. That's right. That's awesome. Uh, it's all those guys. Donnie, Featherston, Nick Haynes, Tom Martin. It's awesome. You know, I just – you know, I think it's credit to Coach Houck, you know, the, the three guys, me, Mark, and, and Shan, you know, or <laughs> Chase and Shan, you know, <laughs> you we made our living in the NFL as special teams, and it started here at the University of Montana when, you know, our, our head coach, Bobby Houck, was our special teams coach, and you know, we, we didn't take plays off, and obviously, um, you know, we, we took a great pride in it, and, and I, I, I know I'm probably speaking for those guys, but uh, you know, I'd say that's what, what kept around us around the NFL was the special teams. Absolutely. Oh, if I could that's tell you guys how many times I had ball security, it's the team's ball <laughs> drilled in my head. And for seven years, I, I had that same, same freaking little guy in the back of my head telling me, you know, your, yeah, I, your only job as a returner <laughs> is to give the ball to the offense. <laughs> okay. Uh, I won't screw it up. <laughs> uh, well, this, this was they, – they got a drive going. This was led to their only points of the day. Uh, they drove it down right away. And then we're going to see old George Mercer here again on a little line game off the edge. And uh, he had a big day. You know, he was uh, – you guys, we were talking about George offline. I mean, he's a guy that walked on in the winter program. Nobody knew his name. He made it through the winter condition, got to come out for spring ball and stuck. And uh, great – I mean, what a great story. A guy – Georgie boys down here also working the twist game. We're going to be up and under on the on the TE game, and he eats it up. Tucks it to run and stopped for no day. George Mercer, the junior out of Libby, makes the tackle. Well, there's the quarterback draw that I said. Bob there it is. What a great, great game. Great play by George. They, uh, they came out with a bunch of stuff. You know, they're playing Destin at quarterback. They came out with some triple option. A bunch of empties we have seen. You guys did a great job handling it, Cole. it to run and stopped for no gain. George Mercer, the junior out of Libby, makes the tackle. I think what I forget about this is, look, this is a tight game. I mean, all of these stops matter so much. This game gets out of hand, but these were huge plays in the first half to shut the well, drives off. We're going to see another one here by uh, – by Shan, uh, this is actually, it says third and one. This is actually fourth and one. And uh, uh, Shan comes up and makes it for no gain. And I mean, that, that back's a pretty good player. He's pretty good in the open field. He makes it for a loss of two or something, and the swarm comes and big stop. Why you run north and south? <laughs> Especially in that down and distance. <laughs> yeah, right. You weren't bouncing too many of those in that situation. No. <laughs> Put my head right in the back of my own line, but they knew that I was going down. I'm glad they invited gonna... Chase on the show. He obviously didn't show up for the first quarter. Oh, <laughs> yeah. God. Well, Chase, you want to tell him, you know, we talked about Shan in the Idaho State game the week before. You want to tell him your recollection of that game? Oh, yeah. Well, I think you mentioned it before. I, uh, you know, I was uh, – having a pretty good season that uh, that year and ended up fumbling the ball and I think you sat me till about the third quarter in that First, game so <laughs> you, so yeah you're having more than a pretty good season you're leading the nation in rushing and uh, totaling yards per game and uh, you coughed it up in the first quarter yeah I might not have done it in this game though yeah, well, I sat there and watched the game till the third quarter so <laughs> I think <laughs> what you're what you're saying is Something ahead, never, some things never change with the ball security stuff, right? I think you did that this year too, Coach. Shouldn't have to. Yep. The ball coach ain't changing. <laughs> nope. So this is where we kind of got away. We started getting away from them. We had still – it's 824 in the second, and we still hadn't done anything on offense uh, aside from Mark's uh, punt return. 
and we got them in first and ten down here. And they this is just a bootleg route, and I'm uh, I'm shocked he just fumbles it on. The, it's, it's not a replay; it's boot, and they just fumble the fake. That looked like the number 91 static so got on that the one. The big it's man out of uh, see if we can tell what Saskatchewan happened. gets on it. There he is. Michael nice. Stadnick. wonder how Staddy's doing. I haven't heard from him in a while. He said for the I don't know. Oh, you got to love him. Here we so go, this, Chase. So, Chase, we'll let you talk us through this. This was a, a little – we have first and goal. We banged it down in there. You can see we're in uh, heavy personnel, fullback, two tight, two tight ends. So, it's uh, – 22 personnel and we were, this was kind of a new play uh counter power where we started claybo uh the opposite direction of the pole have you said for the yeah I, I remember putting this play in and i kind of liked it a little misdirection with uh i think that's taron pulling there um you know he doesn't really get him sealed and i bounce it outside a little bit maybe a hometown call there on the touchdown i'm not <laughs> sure but uh <laughs> But yeah, well, just, he got it in the next play anyway. Yeah, for sure. You know, just running downhill, and you know, I think one thing, one thing I talk about with that old lineman is everybody's on somebody, and it, you know, it's not me being any special than any other guy. Um, the guys we had blocking for us, and and I watched uh, you guys last week with uh, with Mark and in, in the App State game, and uh, you guys hit on it with uh, wide receivers blocking downfield. I mean, that was just. You know, you don't see that these days with uh, um, with them, you know, Mariani and them guys getting downfield and, and getting on somebody and cutting guy time after time after time. And, um, you know, just goes to show this whole season and even the, the next season. I mean, it was just a combination of guys doing their job and uh, getting on getting on man on man and making it easy for me. So that was fun last week watching you go for 200 on App State in the snow. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I missed that. I kind of wish I'd have been there uh, talking with you guys. Well, soon enough, we'll get you back on. But so we, this is it. This is now we're in the third quarter and there was no more scoring. We'd stopped and they stopped us. And uh, we got a little second and 10 deal. They've moved the ball down in a little bit. And this is more new stuff. And they actually come out with some uh, triple option here, which we hadn't prepared for. And I was kind of of our guys this up perfectly even though it's a play we hadn't practiced yeah they run the option Desson stop short Brandon Fisher Fish. huge Fish. I love watching our our our, uh, our physically imposing uh <laughs> our physically imposing linebackers here we got we got soon to be married uh beef Sean Lebsock he's a he's a giant 511 and a half and then there's Fisher, who claimed to be 5'11", he's two inches <laughs> shorter than beef. 200 pounds. <laughs> no yeah. doubt. So th this was a heck of a play. They fit it up right. Yeah, doing their job, being where they're supposed to be. Fisher, the sophomore linebacker from Nashville, Tennessee, comes up Don't to make the loss. Well, we talked to uh, – yeah. uh, There they are. Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> yeah, uh, look at them. Look at them. It looks like a Wizard of Oz scene. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Oh, man. Little uh, fit. Uh, those guys made little yeah, but, fit. yeah, but look at – there's Corwin. Corwin makes up for it. There he yeah. is. Corwin was the best-looking one of the oh, bunch. Gosh, yeah. Look at him. He's a beast. He was put he together. So now we got him in long yardage. Again, they go from triple option to empty stuff they hadn't done any of. Wow. in the pocket, and he's picked off. And then you got Shan making the play. With his fourth pick of the year. Well, he had a good game. There, yeah, he had a big game. There's some good blocking downfield. You can see everybody getting body on body. Yeah. Beef getting them. And, and like the one against App State, Mark would have scored. <laughs> <laughs> Shan, man. Yeah. That ain't true. Oh man, there, there's again some a huge there. start. I mean, this game's not out of hand. They're driving again, and our defense just bend but don't break, and always just flexes and just you get you'll you'll get nothing and like it. So yeah. this one now now we got the, obviously this is right after the pick, and we get the ball back, and and uh, this is this is uh, Ferreter down here, and uh, Mike had a couple of huge plays in this game. It was it was he had a good game too. But you, what you're going to see is you're going to see they roll into cover two, but they're so worried about what the back offset here. 
they hardball this corner in here to play the run. They get no jam. So it's cover two without the jam. And, and uh, your brother-in-law, Mark, does a nice job of fitting the ball in that in that pocket outside. Cole does a nice job oh, seeing it done. off the play action. And Mike makes a hell of a catch. Because, I mean, he knows he's going. I mean, that oh. right there. When you're in that out position, with the guy coming. When you're in that position as a wide out. Yeah. You know you're getting it. it yeah, takes that's a, that's it takes a sacrifice a, for the team right there. Oh boy, I mean that you're everything's exposed, man. You're a tough it's SOB insane. to get that one. It's insane, but it's 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 it seemed to me like Mike made that every single time. He made yeah. so many big catches like that. I it's it's weird to say, but it seemed normal just because he he made it every single time. Well, maybe he, he was right. We should have been throwing it to him more. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> That is a heck of a play. Bowden. Dan Bowden there. People are fired up. So we're, we get to third and four here. So, you know, they weren't stopped. They tried zoning us and tried all that. So in this play, they're going to they're gonna pressure us. So they're, they're doing a pretty good job disguising it, but now they can't get there because they're coming from too much depth. So they're, they're bringing – a bunch of dudes and they're going to roll coverage down and go man free and they're leaving this matchup right out here in this corner he ain't gonna hang with mark I've done a great job. so you can see the backers all come they're single <laughs> they're trying to press mark third and four they probably ought to be pressing but uh that's called shake and he ain't ready for it i gotta i gotta show you guys this coach can you go back to the top of this play yep. to the free snap this is one of the most memorable plays in my college career because keep going, keep going. Because Cole, who ends up being my brother-in-law, watch yeah. it, watch him give me the signal here. He okay. gave me the signal. So right and here. we were we were not allowed to do that. Uh, he, <laughs> we were he, not allowed to do that. Well, and he sure gives you? me the old one, two, and I'm like, oh my God. And oh, you guys yeah. know this guy. We we were kind of we we're at it with fantasy back and forth. Can we do it? Are we allowed to? Yes, no. And he gave it to me, and I'm like, Oh my God. All right. I got you, bro. The best part is the best part is is you can see him right here. He's looking over here. He's yeah. he's, yeah. he's being real sneaky. He's looking over here and giving you the signal. I know. Well, and a lot of that goes on, you know, whatever, but we were not we did not have free reign to do that. So when he called awesome. it, I thought, all right, we better be right, bro. And then he well, ends better up make it work. absolute dime and well, you were worked. right. Yeah. It worked this out. Is what is it, Coach? Pro Production-oriented, you said? Production-oriented business. <laughs> there it is. There it is. And then you get folded up. You didn't play the next week against Big Tech State in the playoff game, did you? Uh, I played. I didn't I, – I kind of – I was limited. Yeah, I got – I shredded ankle, my huh? ankle there a little bit. But, yeah. I'll beat around that looked like it hurt. What a great pass. You it were was down. a dime, dude. Look at him. There he is, the old Berkey. <laughs> You weren't full speed until the semifinal game, I don't think. Yeah, it, it was. It took a while. It didn't. And I guarantee you, the whole time he's going, I can't wait to tell Fantasy I made the check at the line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is awesome. <laughs> when did you know you had him beat? First move. When did you know it was going to be oh a tie? God, when he was playing when that, I knew. Up. I knew. <laughs> right? Yeah. When he was so far inside, you know, because we like to talk. I I did my fair share of chirping, but. When he was there and I got the signal, I just – he hadn't – I mean, he didn't have any help, and <laughs> he was way too far inside. Yeah, yeah, he he knew before the ball was snapped. As soon as he got that hand signal, he was winning. Yeah, and then, it was a great uh, throw, though. And then brother-in-law put it right on the money, which was pretty good, too. He didn't, yep. he didn't choke it up either. That makes it easy. So this is a big play. Nice mittens, Derek. We got uh, – Another fourth and short here. They're going for it as they should. And uh, you can see Colt here. They, they've they tried uh, uh, power at you. They've tried stretch at you, Colt. Now they're going to try a little zone play with the fullback leading up. And I would say of all the things you did here, which are innumerable and too numerous to mention, being able to dig the ball out and know where the running back, you know, essentially you see the hole, know where he's going, and go there and fill it. Uh, it's probably the best thing you did. And 
Palmer, stop for a loss. That's a hell of a play. I'll tell you what, I think Colt Anderson was a little upset. In fact, I'm going to say he Well, was you know, I, I think I had the easy job. Those guys up front, you know, they filled their holes, they filled their gaps, and then I was I was the guy that wasn't accounted for. So it's pretty nice when you, you don't get touched. You can come up and make the tackle. Good fit by the backers bouncing it to you. You sure are in the right spot. And that's a takeaway there. You know, I think about this team, you know, we, we never flinched. We, we always had trust, you know, on the offense, the defense, special teams. There was never fingers being pointed. There was never, hey, he didn't do his job. We, we, we had trust in everybody. We, we trusted that everybody was going to do their job. And we knew that, you know, the other side of the ball, you know, we started off this game slow offensively. But, you know, there, there was no fingers being pointed on the sideline. We, we, we knew that, hey, they're going to get it going. We'll, we'll keep it going. And, you know, that's what made this such a good team is, um, you know, I think about going into that season, we lost a lot of guys. I mean, Croy and Lex and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, everyone really didn't give us credit. And, and so I think that made us tighter. Yeah, this was, this was supposed to be the down year. Yeah. All you guys did was uh, go, what, 14 and 2? Mm -hmm. play for the national championship uh you know and one of the things like colt you just mentioned you guys always bought into you know the defense will have good days and the offense will have bad days and the offense will have good days and the defense will have bad bad days all we need is to win two out of the three phases and we're going to win the game and just kind of hold the rope and that's that's what the first you know two and a half quarters of this game were was just holding the rope and you know, I'd call this the drive. I'm going to let you talk through it a little bit, Chase. But you were uh, – this was probably the best series of downs in your college career in my mind. And we're just going to watch it. They punted it down in here. There, it's, the, it's the very start of the fourth quarter. And uh, we just we just rode you like a borrowed mule right. in this yeah. thing. <laughs> that's what I was here for. I mean, that's, yeah, I remember this, you know, it's anytime you get the ball backed up and you're running back. I mean, first of all, we're just thinking, get this thing out of the end zone, um, you know, and start, just get us some yardage, get us a first down and kind of give us some breathing room. So that's, you know, right here. Uh, well, at the end of this, I'll appreciate you not bringing up that I was a real genius bringing you here out of Drummond and trying you at safe, trying you at safety and wide receiver before I figured out you were right and you were a running back. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, whatever you can do to be better. So I was whatever you told me I needed to do. I was I was there, but uh, I'm glad we all made the decision to put me back. <laughs> this, this is a play that that we don't run much anymore, and we really didn't run it much at the time. But it's a it's a tackle pull play it's a yeah. count here it's a power kind of play but it's a tackle pull play and i just absolutely love the play and we stick it in once in a while but that's big old chris dyke out of out of dylan Good pulling one. in front of you here and yeah. this is great this is a great run you know we're looking at 15 highlight plays why are we showing this one because this is a big time run by you chase reynolds Buying his offense a bit of room, still on his feet. Everybody staying on it. Reynolds yeah. quite out tonight. Yeah, Zach trying to get on somebody. Yeah, I mean, just keep my feet moving, and I knew I had to get out of there, and I wasn't going down. And and uh, you know, again, I mean, look at this this block by even at the end. Uh, I think Dan that's Bowden. Bowden. Yeah, I mean, he's still pushing, and I mean, so we're looking at again the guy the guy here with the ball, Drummond. Thompson Falls, Trout Creek. Yep. <laughs> I mean, wow. I mean, there, there are a lot of Montana, as Colt mentioned earlier, there are a lot of Montana guys. I think that was there. Number was 16 starters from the state of Montana on this team. Yeah. That's awesome. Reynolds fights his way Billing Sr., the big fella. Or is that Russell? Oh, that, no, that's, that's Dowser. Dowser. That's Dow, isn't it? Billing yeah. Sr.? Yep. Those are all Montana guys in that picture right there. That's awesome. Including that's one of the most, actually fourth and inches for the Grizzlies from the Montana State. So it's fourth and one. We're we're in uh, definitely in go for it mode and positive territory here. <laughs> Montana State forty one. And this this one, I mean, like I said, there's certain plays on here, no big deal. <clears throat> but just just watch this play, and watch the surge by our offensive offensive front man. They were awesome, including the tight ends. Burke was the quarterback keeper. I mean, he just stumbles forward for three on a quarterback sneak. 
Berquist, the quarterback keeper, has enough of it. I think I might have been able to even get that one, Coach, maybe, with that O-line. I, I would agree, Riley. <laughs> Haves, too. Tighten their splits up, foot to foot, bring everybody. Uh, the fourth quarter, seven minutes left. That's probably the ball game, huh? Yeah. Uh, just but again, just too much beef and too much Yeah, that's just beef. awesome. So yeah, look at the push. I uh, didn't want to see his year end like that with an injury. I've made it really So fun. this is the one. Now we're, we're <clears throat> obviously we're in four minute bleed mode. We're taking the clock down. Five minutes left, and we're down in there. And uh, awesome. this is the same play that we the counter power we, that Chase scored earlier. So this was a heck of a run, Chase. Really impossible for Montana State to mount. Yeah. I remember this one too, you know, getting through there. And then, uh, you know, I here at the end, uh, <laughs> try to take a shot. <laughs> try to take a shot on the guy in the end zone. And, and I want to say after this, I think he got back in my face and got a penalty. Well, he did. So my question right here, we're going to see you go try to get a piece of him here. So at the end of this is uh, my question is, what's he saying to you? You only going to beat us by four touchdowns? <laughs> yeah. That's all. I think I, I I don't remember what he said, but I think I said to him right there. I don't know, man. All you gotta do is look at the scoreboard. Like I, that, that's, <laughs> I'm not saying much. I wasn't a big talker, but turn around and look at that big board up there. Tell me what it says. Uh, Mark could do all the talking for you, and Colt. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't know where Mark. I don't know where Mark got it. He's this nice kid tennis player out of Haver. <laughs> hey, that right there is the goal. Always the goal. Get him to get a personal foul. You cut them, yeah. they come after you after the play, whatever. Always. That was the whole we, – we had a reward in our room if you got the DB to get a personal foul. And there it was right there, man. That's, that's what it's all about, man. That fires me up big time. Absolutely. Now, I know Colt comes by it naturally. He's from Butte. That's from my room. <laughs> so I, know why, I know why certain guys have it. Mm. I, I don't know what, how I got it. I, I don't know. That is great I'm stuff. Tough. And then uh, – Woo. Oh, that is good stuff. So <clears throat> they're calling timeouts and all that stuff, trying to drive it down here, which they do. They get a couple of plays. Now, obviously, we've got a lot of guys that didn't play full time here. So as Colt mentioned, we're going to bring uh, field zone pressure here, and they're going to run a screen into the boundary. So we're going to get a dropper into coverage here that looks like he's coming. And George is going to peel on the back, and we'll watch this about 100 times. It's going to be fun. Just takes that uh, sting a little bit harder to, to walk out of this thing. That a boy, Georgie. All right. So right here, Tom Martin from Columbus, Montana, walk on, captain. When I, you know, the thing about Tommy was, in all the years voting for captain, I'm never surprised. I mean, I, the team votes for it, and it, it it's like almost 100% over 20 years that they vote for the guys I anticipate they will. To, when Tom elected, uh, uh, got elected captain that fall, I was like, I'll be darned. <laughs> and uh, certainly well-deserved, and he did a great job, but what a fun deal watching him get the game and blitz here and make a key block. And it's picked off by George Mercer, the junior. Yeah, from Tommy was unselfish as they come. Stumbling. Look at him. Look at him. Stumbling, mumbling. That's the football gods when he catches it and runs for a touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to watch it one more time. Was there ever a doubt he was getting into once he had that? It was just fate, right? <laughs> so, in the Absolutely. press conference after the game, they asked me if. Uh, if he'd have got tackled on the one, would we have taken the knee? And all I said was, I looked at him and said, what do you think? <laughs> I think I might have got another touchdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not forget, this is against the Cats, man. This is insult to injury right here with our boy. Yeah. Uh, that's unbelievable. Pretty good ball security by Georgie there, wouldn't you say? Not bad, not bad. I mean, when the D lineman's there, I mean, look at it. He got high and tight, tips up. Uh, is there air there? No air, no air. No well, you can't get it any closer. So we got all those guys coming off the bench, and we got a penalty. I mean, half the team's out there on the field. <laughs> Heatherston. Who else is in there? Is that 90? 
Stole swing. That feather's 90. Stole's in. Look, Dow and Mettler don't even have their helmets on. Full <laughs> offensive line. That's awesome. Uh, that is just awesome. And instead of continuing to pursue Mark Desson, Georgie could run. Knowing that it's green. Yeah. He was springy. Uh, he was, you know, his junior year and senior year, he got a little bigger. I think he, when he walked on, he was about 180 pounds. Mm -hmm. Was he a wide receiver when he walked on, or was he? He was. Yeah. And we promptly moved him to defensive end. And <laughs> Good choice. Go to the weight room. <laughs> he got jacked. Oh, my goodness. That is just absolutely awesome. What a way to end an epic day. <laughs> How'd that bath yeah. feel, Coach? It Team was pretty Anderson. chilly. I mean, that's the end of November. It's not warm. Those are always warm, though. There they are, Dow and Mettler, unsportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I know they're all out there. I'm still bitching at the referees. Yeah. <laughs> there you are, Cole. Big Dom. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> There's Caligus looking there yoked up. Coach Hud. Oh, uh, that is good stuff, Georgie. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's still Houston Stockton. The big wow. hug. What a crew, man. That is the crew. Good job, Georgie. <laughs> oh man, those are good memories, huh? Oh, they're awesome. It's good what to come back and watch these. What do you remember most from that season, Chase? Oh, geez. There's so much from that. I think, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the beginning of the season. Actually, you want to know what I really remember? Would be the Cal Poly game. Uh, <laughs> I knew you were I think that was, huh? Well, they were, they were ranked second in the country. We went down there and beat them. Yeah, but that was the – I was probably my worst game. That was the first game I, I got won the starting job and then just completely had the worst game of my life. You know, I, I missed a huge hole on the first play. Uh, I was on punt team. I was a gunner. And uh, I remember coming off on third down and, and uh, you're yelling, Who, where, where's our, where's our 11th player? Well, it's me. And uh, you just come over there and your, your face mask just chewing me. And I'm going, man, this, I just want to go home. <laughs> I don't want to play football no more. Uh, and, uh, and, and then the, I think it was the end of the second half, we ran a, like a hook and ladder to Mariana. Yeah, the lateral play off the, off the, the, uh, off the little the, check the, down. The Mary look. Yep. And uh, I turn around, I couldn't find him. And I come off and you're just screaming at me. What are you, you know, where, what are you looking at? What are you doing? And, and, uh, so that's what I probably remember most. But but after that, kind of, you got that, into my. <laughs> after that, you averaged about 150 a game. Yeah, got into my groove. And, uh, you know, that, that was just a phenomenal year. And, and to go, I think we mentioned it earlier, to, to go from a team that was in a rebuilding season and not, met, not much was expected of us. Um, There's so many small guys that stepped up and got into positions and, and took advantage. Um, and we just, I mean, it was a phenomenal season. And um, Well, this, this, this was a year that they picked us not to win uh, the conference. And yep. then uh, we went down there and beat Cal Poly. And we were, we were ranked like seventh in the country, I think, day second. That's when I knew we had a chance. And, and that Cal Poly game, your boy Andrew Schmidt blocked a punt, pulled you out of the fire, and then Ferreter caught the high boot on the first play of the game. Out of uh, eleven personnel for touchdown, we pulled your tail out of the fire. <laughs> How I about you, Mark? What well, do you remember? I, I, I think I'll echo it a little bit, but just because you kind of look at that roster and it's so fun pointing out all the faces and names, but you look at that roster and, and you know, on paper, you're just like, "How did these guys accomplish what they accomplished?" And I think Colt hit on it earlier. It was just like we used it as motivation that everyone was doubting us and we just never had a doubt. Like I don't remember one time taking the field, not thinking, even if we were down and not thinking that we were going to win this game somehow, some way, the defense is going to make the play, the special teams, the offense, it doesn't matter who it is, but you rarely get that feeling. We just loved each other. And it just was a, it was a tight knit crew led by these senior class. And I mean, 
Colt, but I had one in my receiver room. Ferreter was leading the troops and they really did. Everybody doubted us that year. And it was one of the best seasons, you know, however you want to rank it, but it was, it's rare to come across that emotional feeling when you just know you're going to whoop somebody's ass every single Saturday. It was a confident group. That's for sure. And, you know, all you guys played in the NFL and, you know, at this point, Juncture would have envisioned that. Not at all. So, what about you, Colt? What do you remember? As your senior year, you were the man. <laughs> yeah, right. You, you didn't were... tell me that, though. What's that? <laughs> I said you never told me that. Not till you were done. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have – no, it, it's that's what we were about. We didn't have any star players. Um, you know, we just – we had that blue-collar mentality and – Showed up to practice, worked extremely hard, worked hard in the weight room, you know, some workouts. I'll I remember, you know, the times off the field probably more than the times on the field. But, you know, especially with, you know, guys that come in from – I remember coming in my, my freshman year and seeing Burquist, seeing guys from, you know, all over the country. And, and, and by the time you leave, you know, you're best of friends and, and, you know, we still stay in touch and it's family. You know, you, you, friends become family. And, teammates become family and that's that's what University of Montana um, the football program is is family and um, you know in my opinion there's there's nothing better and I love being part of of, of the Grizz family and uh, was extremely fortunate to play there and extremely fortunate to have you as a coach and, and these guys as my teammates. Well I'll say it one more time uh, good coaches are good coaches because they have great players and you know one of the things I would say is I didn't ever think that this defense got enough credit for being, I think, the best defense in the country that mm -hmm. year. And and second wasn't close. And I think specifically you guys, Colt, in the secondary, because we had three of our four starters in the secondary played in the NFL. And I don't know if any of you even made first team all conference. I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe you did. The other two certainly didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was just the whole season we were just kind of overlooked, which is fine with me. I'd rather be that than yeah. you know, have a target on my back, which is cool. Yeah, I think that's that's a lot of why we were so successful, though. I mean, you know, sometimes that 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 uh, unknowing or or the the predictions that say that we aren't going to be good or we get we're rebuilding. I mean, that you know that chip on your shoulder is is partly who builds you and what makes you who you are. And um, you know, I we were just talking about this too and, and just everybody everybody knew that they had a job and there was there wasn't one guy that was better than the other I mean we were all in it together and we just fought for each other it really was a brotherhood I mean we knew we knew that the guys would have our back and um yeah it was just a man such a brotherhood I can't believe I mean it's 12 years afterwards I can't believe I'm even Easy, saying right? that but point, I know I had I had to throw the numbers out there you exactly. know I threw a number in there but it's crazy to me how uh, obviously Grizz Nation and everybody else, they go through these games and they maybe know it play by play. But for you guys going back and watching these, maybe for the first time or second time, I, I mean, what kind of emotions does that give you? And I guess for Chase and Colt guys that we didn't talk to last time, how many, how often are you guys going back and have you ever watched these games start to finish before? Do you maybe hear the highlights more from fans going, God, I remember that play you made in the third quarter against the Cats in 08. Is it more like that or are you guys getting reminisced a little bit too? Oh, I watch these every day. I mean, that's why I wake <laughs> up. <laughs> no, it's, I, yeah, I mean, I think I, some of these games I probably hadn't even watched, especially the, uh, you know, maybe afterwards watching film, obviously, but, you know, after that, I mean, I, we don't, you know, I, I don't have time or don't, you know, don't go back and look at them. I mean, sometimes people talk about games and gosh, I've played so much football now. I can't even remember half the games I played. So um, kind of coming back and really looking at these, you know, there's always certain moments in every game that you you'll never forget, but going back through these and, and even watching some of the plays that the other players make, you know, it's really special, you know, and I, it's great to watch yourself and watch some of the plays, but, you know, just to go back on the highlights and see the team as a whole and, and come back and, and start mentioning all these guys that we used to play with. And, you know, some of these guys we probably haven't talked to since the, the day we left. So, um, yeah, these are really cool. And I'm, I'm, it's, it's awesome to be a part of this with you guys and be able to talk to you guys and kind of reminisce about these uh, special moments in our life.
Well, hey, I want to thank you guys for coming on with this for sure. And I, I want to tell you, well, first of all, I love you guys. And I really uh, am proud of you, and not just for the great success you had on the football field and in business and all that, but for the, the great family men, husbands, and fathers that you've become. So you guys are uh, the best. I'm proud of you, and I can't wait to see you in person. Um, love you too, Coach. Thank you, guys. Love you too, man. Thank you, guys. Love Good you, seeing you all. For Coach Halk, the legends, Mark Colt and Chase Riley Corcoran signing off for now. We'll have more Grizz Classics for you as we get through this pandemic together. Take care, everyone.